Okay, before we start with the seminar, um, I'm just going to go through with the tentative for today. So I'm going to now at the moment I'm having the I'm, I'm doing the opening remarks and I'm going to give you a bit overview of what we have um, gone through last week because we have a new participants joining us tonight. And after that, around 8.20, we are going to have the first presentation, which is on radiation protection and safety for the patient and public. And after that, uh, at 8.50 p.m., we will continue with the second and also the last presentation, which is nuclear incidents and their effects to human and surroundings, and followed by the Q&A. After that, again, we are going to have a quiz, two quiz from each of the presentation. And... The feedback form for those who want the CPD and my CAST for USM students and USM staff. So you can wait for around 9.45 after we've done with the quiz and then I'm going to um, give the link for the feedback form. It's for those who have attended last week, so basically you know how um, this seminar is going to um, go on. And if you have any question, um, we are going to answer the question at the end after both of the presentation have presented their presentation. Um, so you can just simply um, type in your question in the chat area, or you can just unmute when we are uh, at the Q&A session, because I don't want to have any um, popping. There will be no delays with all the presentation. Um, okay, let's just have a bit of um, recap of what we have learned um last week so basically um last week the students have explained about what is the radiation uh, i believe that most of you are familiar with the symbols so whenever you see these symbols like the pen look like this so this is actually a radiation and there's also a distinction between a ra ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. So basically this symbol, when you're talking about radiation and you found this symbol, we are talking mainly about ionizing radiation and not non-ionizing radiation. Um, and if we go by definition, so what is actually a radiation? So radiation is an energy in the form of electromagnetic wave or particulate matter, which is traveling in the air. So there are two keys actually over here when we're talking about radiation. The first one is the energy, and then the second one is traveled. So then only you have the energy that travels in the air. And they are having two forms. So the first one is electromagnetic waves, and another one is called a particulate matter. So we have different types of radiation as well. We have alpha, beta, neutrons. Um, basically, these are the ionizing radiation, and you have electromagnetic waves, which also contains both ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. And because it differs uh, in mass and energy, so their penetration ability also different. And in this electromagnetic wave, you can see that uh, it's comprised both the uh, ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation, and it goes by energy. And also you can see that there is a long wavelength. So basically when you have a longer wavelength, so the energy also uh, decreases. So as it has more shorter, shorter wavelength, so you will see that the energy will also decreases. So that's also the reason why for the microwaves, radio waves, infrared, and also the visible light, which is um, the most common things that we use in our daily life, uh, basically for your Wi-Fi, for your TVs, for your phones, and um, any means of the um, what communications and the visible light that we use in, in, in our daily life. So they are part of the non-ionizing radiation, which is basically are not able to ionize an, uh, an electron. Uh, and we would say that it's quite safe compared to this ionizing radiation, which is having a shorter wavelength and also carries the um, higher energy. And because of that as well, if this low energy interact with our body, so they are not going to ionize the body, um, this is not going to cause much of the effects. However, for the ionizing radiation, it will able to ionize our body and then eject an electron that comes from it. So it will actually cause the uh, more harmful effects. Uh, and then we talk about 
um, the sources of radiation as well in our daily life from the things that um, you know that in our food as well we have a natural occurring radioactives. We also have the radioactive gases in the air, which is the radon that we breathe in every day. We can't avoid that. And then the, our own body also contains radioactive whenever you eat something. And then also from the cosmic radiation, which is our um, sunlight itself, also contains radioactives. And they um, affected our body um, using two ways. The first one is a direct action, which is the target is DNA. And then um, if it's directly, so these um, X-ray photons coming from the radiation are going to interact directly with the um, DNAs. And then if you have the indirect, you will actually interact with the molecules, which is normally the water molecules. And then these water molecules are going to form into a free radicals and then the free radicals are going to attack the DNAs. Um, so basically that's what we discussed last week. Um, the first group, are you ready? Should we have the presentation now? I know. Ready, doctor. Okay. So we are going to start with the first presentation. You can start sharing your slides now. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening everyone. Today, me and my friend uh, will be present the topic of radiation protection and safety profession and public. Next. The source of radiation in medicine can be classified into two, which are radiation that comes from outside, which is from extra tube, and radiation that comes from patient body like in nuclear medicine department. In radiology, radiography is an imaging procedure that uses an X-ray beam that can penetrate the body to form an image on detector. Meanwhile, radiotherapy can be classified into two, which are external and internal radiation therapy. External radiation therapy is a type of cancer treatment which high energy beam or high dose of radiation is delivered to destroy the cancer cell and shield the tumor. Meanwhile, internal radiation therapy is also known as brachytherapy, which the treatment is performed with cell radioactive source is inserted temporarily or permanently in the patient body. Next. In this slide, I would like to emphasize more detail about the procedure performed in nuclear medicine department. For imaging procedure, radiopharmaceutical will administer to the patient via injection. This radiopharmaceutical will be distributed into the region of interest and the emission of gamma ray from this radiopharmaceutical will be captured using gamma camera. Meanwhile, for therapeutic procedure, patient will drink radioactive material which is iodine-131 thyroid cancer and hyperthyroidism in therapeutic mouth. This patient will be isolated in the isolation ward until its radiation exposure is less than 5 microsievert per hour. Since the radiation comes from patient body, the patient itself should be aware to apply the Alara principle in order to keep the surrounding people from radiation exposure. Don't worry, I will be explaining the Alara principle in the other slide. We will proceed with other presenter. Okay, first of all, after we already know about the source of the radiation uh, that used for cure the uh, disease, we must know about the radiation protection and safety. Okay, in this topic, we can define the radiation protection and radiation safety in separately. Radiation protection is known as a radiological protection where it defined by the IAEA. IEA is one of the organizations that is responsible to the nuclear fuse and promote the safe, secure and peaceful use of nuclear technology. Back to the definition, the radiation protection is the protection of the pupil from harmful effect of the exposure to the ionizing radiation and the means for achieving this. Basically, it is known as a protection of pupil from getting any hazard or effect either in physical or biological due to the harmful of radiation. Okay, next is radiation safety. 
It is known as the combination of the safe practice and precautionary measure that put in a place to promote the safety when working with or near the radiation. This is the radiation symbol that everyone must be recognized. This symbol is international symbol that used to indicate the radioactive source, container for radioactive materials, and area where the radioactive materials are stored and used. The presence of this symbol, which has a magnet or black propeller on a yellow background, it donates that the need for caution to avoid the contamination with or undue the exposure to the atomic radiation. Okay, the wording on the sign, it varies with the level of the potential radiation in the area. Next slide. Okay. For basic principle of radiation protection can be categorized into three, which are justification, optimization, and limitation of dose. Justification is any decision that alter the radiation exposure situation should do benefit than harm. Besides, optimization is the number of people exposed and the magnitude of their individual dose should be key as low well as reasonably achievable, which is ALARA, by taking the economy and societal factor. Limitation of dose is the total dose to any individual other than medical exposure of patient should not exceed the appropriate limit recommended by the International Commission on Radiological Protection, ICRP. Next. What is ALARA? ALARA is a safety principle specifically designed to reduce radiation dose and release of radiative material. This principle can be applied by using three techniques. First, minimize the time spent in any radiation area. This is because redu reduction of exposure time can directly reduce radiation exposure and radiation dose. Therefore, the work time should be limited when the person is working in radiation area. Second, maximize the distance to radiation source. By doubling the distance to source of radiation, the radiation exposure can be reduced by a factor of four. Besides, reduction of exposure due to an increase in distance is governed by inverse square law. Third, shielding is a material that absorbs the radiation. Lab and concrete are most used material for shielding of X-ray and gamma ray due to its very effective in stopping or blocking the radiation beam. The wall of X-ray are lead lined to reduce radiation exposure to those areas on the other side of wall. As you can see the diagram here, gamma ray and X-ray can be stopped using lead material. However, gamma ray is more penetrating compared to X-ray due to its high energy than X-ray. For next. For, a, for radiation detected device, lead apron and tarot sheet are most commonly, commonly used by personnel to protect them from radiation during radiology procedure. Lead apron is used for primary radiation protective garment for personnel during fluoroscopy and to shield their body part during portable estimation. Moreover, radiation protection provided by a lead apron is approximately same as 0 0.25 to 1 mm thick lead. Um, Besides, an apron with 0.5 mm thickness can attenuate approximately 90% or more scatter radiation. Since the thyroid gland is vulnerable to scatter radiation, we should be protected and its main annual maximum permissible dose recommended is 300 mSv. By using thyroid sheet, effective dose can be reduced by 2.5 times and almost 50% of total exposure. Thus, it is the best way to minimize risk of thyroid cancer for radiation exposure during fluoroscopy procedure. The thyroid sheet should have at least 0.5 ml lead equivalent enough for net and thyroid protection. We will proceed with other presenters. Hi, everyone. And now I'm going to talk about the classification areas. There are the three areas, controlled, supervised, and uncontrolled areas. First one, controlled, a limited access area in which the occupational exposure of personal radiation is under the supervision of an individual in its charge of radiation protection. This one, individuals follow protective measures to control radiation exposure and directed by appropriate sign and posters for safety purposes. Second area, supervised area. And this one, <clears throat> an area not designed as an uh, a controlled area, but occupational exposure conditions are kept under review. 
additional protective measures and safety provision are not normally needed. Third area, uncontrolled. Occupied by individuals such as patients, visitors, and employees who don't work routinely with or around radiation sources. Areas adjacent uh, to, but not part of the radiation facility is uh, also uncontrolled area. Why radiation waste should be managed? Instead of using a lot of principle for radiation protection, a management of radioactive should be performed in appropriate uh, way in the department. Definition, a radioactive waste contains radioisotopes that are characterized by the production of dangerous ionizing radiation of very short wavelength, their long-term activity and lifetime, such as products contaminated by radionuclide, including radioactive diagnostic material or therapeutic material. Types of radioactive waste. There's three types, solid, liquid, and gas. First type, solid. Solid radioactive waste con consists a protective clothing, plastic sheets, and bags, gloves, mask, filter, overshoes, paper wipes, towels, metal, and glass, hand tools, and discarded equipment. This one has a low level of radioactivity. Contamination, second one, liquid. Liquid contamination of water from decontamination sol solutions, solvents, blood, or body fluids, discarded liquid, radiopharmaceuticals, wound or oral discharge and uh, urine. This one was that include both radioactivity and uh, radioactivity and a hazardous chemical component is usually referred to a mixed uh, waste. Third one gas, xenon 133 and 81 MKR, this one noble gases, often released to the atmosphere through an exhaust system. It's essential to ensure that there is no possibility of re-entry of released gases back into the building through open windows or ventilation system. Manage of waste disposal. There is two ways, <coughs> clinical and biological. A clinical waste such as linen, clothes, and strings must be disposed in temporary storage in a secure manner until it decay to the recommended limit, which is five microsievert per hour. Second one, biological. Anything that is secreted from patient body, such as urine, feces, and other, must be stored in delay and decay tank before it's exaggerated to the normal sewage site. Patient lack awareness of risk related to the radiation exposure. Reason for failure waste management. Lack of awareness about the health hazards related to the healthcare waste. Inadequate training and proper waste management. Absence of waste management and disposal systems. Insufficient financial and human resources and the low priority Given, into, given to the topic are the most common problems connected with healthcare waste. Many countries either don't have appropriate regulation or don't enforce them. Thank you. Okay, next is exposure limit. Exposure limit is known as the occupational dose limit. They are set so the exposed person will not exceed the safe risk while working with the radiation. It used to apply the control on the individual accumulation of dose and upper boundary dose of radiation that will result in a risk of body injury or genetic damage. It can be expressed for whole body or partial organ. However, dose limit do not include the medical exposure or natural radiation. Okay, before we know about the exposure limit, we must know about the ICRP. Because the dose limit are recommended by the ICRP or International Commission on Radiological Protection. As we know, the ICRP is independent international organization that at once for the public benefit the science of radiological protection by provide the recommendation and guidance in aspect of protection against the ionizing radiation. The objective of the exposure limit for radiation protection and safety is to prevent the occurrence of the deterministic effect and also reduce the indication of stochastic effect. Next slide. OK, 
Okay, this is the tolerance of exposure limit to the public. Okay, for whole body exposure, we know that it uh, has uh, must less than one millisievert. For average dose for the lens of the eyes is 15 millisievert. Average dose for the skin, 50 millisievert. Effective dose limit for a person that assists the patient during the treatment or diagnosis must less 5 millisievert. While the effective dose limit for children below 16 years old that visited the e patient must less than 1 millisievert per year. Next slide. Okay, there are two effects that occur when exceed the exposure tolerance limit or dose limit. Okay, first we can see this is a deterministic effect. Deterministic effect are short term. It was the tissue reaction result from a dose that significant high enough to damage the tissue. The severity of deterministic effect increase with the radiation dose above the threshold. Okay, the deterministic effect uh, divided into two which is acute radiation sickness and chronic radiation sickness. Acute radiation sickness is not dangerous effect. This effect are caused when the dose are large and deliver in a short time. Usually occur after the exposure or within 24 hours to the exposure. This easy to cure and control. The acute radiation sickness can happen when the 1000 millisievert in a single dose, a single dose is uh, achieved to the person. This is the example of the acute radiation sickness. Next is the why uh, the chronic radiation sickness. It occur usually after a month or year of exposure occur within the high radiation dose. This effect is dangerous and difficult to cure and sometimes it lead to the death. Even small dose of radiation that continuously over many years can also cause the chronic effect. It is in a long-term effect such as cataract, cancer or genetic mutation. It can also include the temporary and constant the sterility and inability to conceive the baby. Next slide. Okay, next is stochastic effect. Stochastic effect are probabilistic effect that occur by the chance. It extremely rare stochastic effect is development of the cancer in an irradiated organ or tissue. The probability of occurrence is typically proportional with the dose that received. Stochastic effect after the exposure to the radiation occur in many years after later. Okay, this effect is contained to which is somatic effect and genetic effect. Somatic effect of the radiation is limited to the exposed individual only and they are distinguished from the genetic effect. This effect are harming the exposed individual where it suffer during their lifetime. They can get cancer, leukemia and other disease. While for the genetic effect, the ionizing radiation damage the genetic material in the reproductive cell and by the result which this effect are transferred from generation to the generation. The radiation induces the material to an individual gene or DNA that can contribute to the birth of defection, a defective descendants, and also the future generation and will produce the mutation. Next slide. Okay, benefit below the exposure limit. The radiation exposure will be keep as low as possible the patient and their family can be aware what type of the procedure they are being doing and feel safe during the treatment occur. The illness or any injury can be avoided or reduced by and prevent from the stochastic and deterministic effect occur. And lastly, the public do not receive any, any unnecessary exposure either from patient or personnel itself. Next. So hi everyone, uh, today I will be discussing on the awareness of radiation exposure towards public and patients. So why the awareness of radiation exposure is so important? This is because we want to prevent the unnecessary radiation to the other people, especially in concern our pregnant women and children. So as we know that infant and children are comparatively highly sensitive to radiation 
and they having a long life expectancy. So it is important to have even little education on radiation before they undergoing any radiation procedures. For example, if patient undergoing iodine-131 therapy, they should aware that themselves become a, become a source of radiation and they could give a radiation exposure to other people. So they, they should aware to distance themselves after discharge because there is a radiation source radiation source left in their body uh, and it could cause a low radiation exposure to these uh, people. And the second benefit, which we can reduce the risk of radiation from lead patient and intercourse. The risk of exposure from lead patient could uh, result in deterministic effects. Where they can uh, get the source of the awareness is by having a good communication between patient and physician during the counseling season, seasons from education and based on their past experience. Next slide. So on my presentation today, I would like to emphasize on the effect that pregnant women may encounter if they are receiving the radiation exposure. But before that, let begins with the first step before any procedure are performed, where patients will be checked whether they are pregnant or not. And they, they should tell the staff if they are pregnant or they might think they are pregnant. This is because the unborn, baby, the unborn baby are more sensitive to radiation than adults. And the risk of the uh, exposure to the infants may, de may depend on the stage of pregnancy, on the type of procedure that they are undergoing, and the amount of the radiation that they are used. Uh, so they should ask for seek, uh, they should seek for an advice from the physicians if they really need to undergo these procedures. Next slide. Okay, um, so this diagram shows how pregnant women might get the radiation exposure. Firstly, by uh, swallowed or breathed in the radiative material, and the substance may be absorbed into her bloodstream. And from the mother's bloodstream, from the mother's blood, it may pass to the umbilical cord to the fetus. And the second way, when the mother abdomen is exposed to radiation from outside of her body. So the possibility of severe health effects that infant may get depends on their gestational age of the fetus at the time the exposure and the amount of the radiation that they are exposed to. However, um, these fetus are particularly sensitive to radiation during their early development, which is between week 12 to 18 of pregnancy. So the consequences that infant may get is uh, such as stunted growth, deformities, abnormal brain function, or cancer that can develop uh, some sometimes later in their life. Uh, however, if the mother wear a shielding in her abdomen uh, to protect the womb from the exposure that coming from the outside, the fetus will receive a low radiation radiation dose from uh, than the mother. Thus, less radiation effects to the babies. Next slide. Um, so here are the research performed on 1968. The researchers named Decarbon, uh, where he surveyed the literature, for instance, of public X-ray irradiation in a pregnant woman. So based on the data that they get, it shows that there, uh, there is a large, a large radiation dose delivered to embryo uh, before week two to three gestations. Um, and it will not provide a severe abnormalities to the embryo, but the embryo may be aborted. Um, but in week to 11, it could lead to a severe abnormalities in uh, many organs in the children. While in week 11 to 16 gestations, it may cause may cause a flow eyes, as you can see in the first pictures, and circulated and genital organ abnormalities. So if the irradiation of fetus uh, occur in between week 16 to 25 uh, gestation, it may lead to a mild degree of microcephaly, mental retardation and stunning of growth, as you can see in the figures too. Um, and lastly, uh, if irradiation occur after week 13, it likely to produce a growth structure abnormalities um, as in a figure three. Next slide. So um, radiation exposure could be delivered um, by a lactation. Um, it, it occur when mothers uh, swallow a radioactive source. So, mother who still breastfeeding are advisable to express their breast milk before administration of ready pharmaceutical and keep it in the refrigerator for use during the period of interruptions. 
um, this is because the radioactive that secret into the breast milk will be transferred to the babies and give the unwanted radiation to them. So usually uh, the dose limit to the infant is one millisievert. This is the general limit recommended by the RCRP for protection of member of the general public. Next slide. Uh, lastly, this is the research published by uh, published from a land university in Sweden, where the activity of concentration in the breast milk um, from 53 mother were determined. Um, and milk was collected at various times after administration of ready pharmaceutical. Uh, here it shows that the absorbed dose to the thyroid of the infant get from the mother who undergoing the iodine 121 therapy was 670 milligram. Uh, which this dose indicate the high effective dose to the infant. So uh, this, is, this research shows that the interaction in the breastfeeding during the treatment is really necessary as it could give the higher effective dose to the infant. So the interaction was suggested by the researchers based on this re research is at least three weeks after administration of ID, iodine-131 depend on the dose use. Uh, this is because the concern on the infants that is exposed to iodine 131 through the milk may cause a development of thyroid problem, such as thyroid uh, poor thyroid function, damage to the to the thyroid gland, and increased uh, chance of thyroid carcinoma. Next slide. Okay. So um, today will be end our group presentation with a quote. That sounds uh, no one have ever died from an overexposure to education. So that's all from us, and thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Group One. Um, so if you have any other question for them, uh, please write your question at the chat. Um, we are going to answer your question during the Q and A session. Group two, are you ready? Okay, group one, please unshare your screen. Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming tonight. My name is Iman Amira and our group will give you an insight about some of the nuclear incidents that previously happened and its impact to human and surrounding. But first, let me give you a brief view of what is nuclear reactor and how it works. So a nuclear reactor, formerly known as atomic pile, is a device used to initiate and control a fission nuclear chain reaction or nuclear fusion reaction. So a nuclear reactor is actually the heart of the nuclear power plant, mainly to produce electricity. Generally, they contain and control nuclear chain reaction that produce heat through a physical process called fission to produce electricity. So there is two types of nuclear reactor. One is pressurized water reactor and another one is boiling water reactor. So pressurized water reactor pumps water into the reactor core. So the water in the core is heated by nuclear fission and then pumped into tubes inside a heat exchanger. So those tubes heat a separate water source to create steam and then the steam turns an electric generator to produce electricity. While for boiling water reactors, it produces heat, it produce, uh, heat, heat, heat water and produce steam directly inside the reactor vessels and then water is pumped up through the reactor core and heated by fissions then feed the steam directly to a turbine to produce electricity. So let's see benefit and risk of the nuclear power plant. Uh, some of the benefits of nuclear power plant are it helps to reduce the greenhouse gas emission, fuel efficient and resilient in times of extreme weather. Uh, while the cons is any accident happen due to it will emit radioactive materials that will give a concern on how to dispose the radioactive waste. 
So this is the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale, INES. And this scale was established by the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. So any incidents and accidents that happen at nuclear facilities are divided into seven categories according to their severity. So each country determine the severity of incident or accidents according to their severity um, and announce the results. Uh, so we're going to discuss some of the accidents that have been reported, um, such as a Tokyo, uh, Fukushima Daiichi, which is at uh, level seven, and also Chernobyl, which is also at level seven, and Three Mass Island accident at level five. So the first accident uh, is Three Mass Island, which is located at Pennsylvania on 1979. It is categorized as level five uh, of nuclear accidents. Uh, it is consists of pressurized water reactors. So chronology events of this accident, uh, it began at about 4 a.m. when the plant experienced a failure in the secondary reactor MI2 and a mechanical failure prevented the main feed water pumps from sending water to the steam generators that removed heat from the reactor core. So this caused the plant's turbine generator and then the reactor itself to automatically shut down. And immediately, the pressure in the primary system began to increase. Uh, in order to control that pressure, the pilot operative, uh, operated relief valve opened. Um, the valve actually should have closed when the pressure fell to proper levels, but it became stuck open. So instrument in the control room, however, indicated to the plant staff that the valve was closed. So as a result, the plant staff was unaware that the cooling water in the form of steam was pouring out of the stuck open valve. Uh, emergency core cooling system, ECCS, uh, dump tons of water into the reactor core to reduce the intense heat. Uh, a technician shut down the first pump on the ECCS after misreading or getting false reading on his instrument. So a second pump was stripped about six minutes later, completely halting the last lines of defense against over overheating. Technician realized the system is not functioning and opened the closed valve in an attempt to bring down the temperature in the reactor. So when it is open, the fission product vented to the system. Uh, the fission product vented is krypton uh, 85, cesium 127, and iodine-131, and xenon 123. Next. So uh, it actually took until nearly 7 a.m. for reactor staff to notify local and state authorities about the situation. And at 7.24 a.m., Emergency was declared, but though uh, officials had began responding to what they considered to be an emergency, the upward facing message downplayed the danger. The day after the partial meltdown occurred, official, an official from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, told that the public uh, the danger had passed. Uh, but by the night of March 29, residents were free on the radiation and told that the reactor had suffered actually more damage than previously thought. So NRC advised everyone within 10 months of the power plant to stay inside. A few hours later, NRC later said that pregnant women and small children should leave the area, while other residents were told to remain inside. Uh, and no evacuation uh, plan at all. Some local residents weren't going to risk it. About 40% of people who live within 15 miles of Three Miles Island evacuated themselves, uh, order or without order. Uh, and then many citizens became fearful of nuclear power plant in general. Uh, and plus, films like the China Syndrome catalyzed these feelings for decades after this catastrophe. Next is the next is the cleanup and decontamination of the site. A uh, cleanup process for TMI Unit 2 started in August of 1979. It was a 12-year project that employed over 1,000 people, and all radioactive fuel and water were shipped to existing nuclear waste storage facilities in the United States. Uh, the containment building for this reactor still remains and houses waste for TMI Unit 1. And the approximate cleanup price for the accident was $973 million, uh, and the cleanup uh, ended in December 1993.
Okay, for the health effect of the incident, uh, initially, according to American Nuclear Society, the average radiation dose to people living within 10 miles of the plant was 8 milligram and no more than 100 milligram to any single individual. So to put this into context, uh, 8 milligram is about equal to a chest X-ray and 100 milligram is about a third of the average background level of radiation received by US residents in a year. It was said that the collective dose uh, equivalent resulting for the, from the radioactivity release from the accident was so low that the estimated number of excess cancer to be expected would be negligible. But however, according to, to Stephen Wing and R. William Phil and their colleagues, uh, they have dissenting studies against this. It was said that the cancer rate uh, raised within a 10 miles radius two years after the accident. And also discarded some of the increased cancer rate noted around TMI were related to the area that have very high level of natural radon. And uh, also stated that around TMI has the highest regional radon uh, potential in the United States. So lastly, uh, there are some changes that have been made to improve the safety of the nuclear reactor that mainly emphasize on enhancing the performance of nuclear regulatory commission and RC. Uh, and conclusion to the today, uh, the TMI2 reactor is permanently shut down and 99% of its fuel has been removed. Unit 1 was restarted in the fall of 1985 and has been providing power to the residents of the area until September 2019. Uh, yeah, so that's all about Three Miles Island. I pass to my friends for the next question. Hi, uh, I'm Hazika. I will continue with another incident, which is Chernobyl incident. Okay, uh, okay, for this nuclear power plant, it consists of four reactors. Uh, actually, during the incident, they actually want to do the safety test at reactor number four. Okay, uh, to determine how long the tubing will spin and supply power in the event of a power failure. Okay, uh, on 25th April uh, at 1 p.m., they started to prepare for safety test and they begin by reducing power at reactor number 4. Uh, at 2 p.m., the test and shutdown, uh, however, were delayed uh, to accommodate the region's power needs. At 11.10 p.m., uh, they received the approval to continue the test. By now, less experienced night shift is on the job. They actually not receive proper instructions on how to perform the test. Okay, uh, in the midnight, uh, 26 April, the power become not stable. The operator responds by removing most of the control routes, which actually this uh, action is violated with the safety guidelines. Okay, at 1 p.m., uh, one hour later, the power becomes stable, uh, but lower than the preferred level. The automatic emergency shutdown system was uh, turned off because they are uh, afraid that it will... Uh, Destructed the safety test. At 1.23, the real test begins, but the power capacity suddenly increases. Uh, they uh, press the emergency shutdown button and the control routes uh, starts to descend and start fuel tubes deform due to the large increase in the steam pressure. Okay, uh, the nuclear reactor at uh, reactor number 4 reached 120 times of its full power. Radioactive fuel disintegrates. Pressure from all the excess steam that's supposed to go to the turbines breaks every pressure tubes, and the explosion occurs. Okay. Uh, um, actually, more than hundred uh, radioactive elements were released, but iodine, strontium, and cesium is uh, are considered a uh, dangerous element because uh, they have high uh, half life and uh, they're up to 30 years. Okay, uh, so for the causes of uh, incidents, it actually occurred due to the lack of knowledge and experience uh, of the operator due to the delay and uh, the night shift doesn't prepare to, the, to carry out the test, but they still carry out the test. And also they have insufficient communication between the safety, of, uh, safety supervisor and also the operator in charge 
the most importantly, they disable all the safety system which are actually uh, opposed to the safety guidelines. And also the reactor design was uh, is flawed because this reactor is a uh, difference from other reactors. Uh, they use graphite as the moderator and uh, water as coolant. Uh, actually, this reactor uh, is uh, rejected by other countries outside Soviet Union at that time. Okay, uh, for attempt to control the situations, firstly, the firefighters tried to extinguish the fires and then they decided to cover the reactor with more than uh, 500,000 5,000 tons of sand and other materials by using the helicopter and also they cover uh, the reactor with temporary concrete structure called sarcophagus to limit the further release of radiative and the government also cut down and buried square mile of pine forest near the plant to reduce the radiative contamination. Okay for the evacuation plan uh, actually, no one in the surrounding areas was evacuated uh, until 36 hours uh, after the disaster began. Uh, for Soviet Union, publicizing a nuclear accident actually uh, considered a, a significant political risk. Uh, they first denied, but Soviets finally made announcement on 28 April after other nuclear power plants began to ask about what was actually happening. Okay, the, the first evacuation of the uh, begin uh, uh, involved 47,000 of people using bus and lorry. Uh, 335,000 of people in total uh, have been evacuated, cover, which cover 19 miles wide around the reactor. And uh, for the radiation dose, actually uh, 530,000 uh, liquidators that uh, that registered from 1986 until 1990 received uh, an average of dose ranging from 20 uh, up to 500 millisieverts. The firefighters who died uh, received 20,000 milligrams of dose. Uh, the highest dose received by about 1,000 workers uh, on the first day of the accidents. The evacuee who have been evacuated received effective radiation dose uh, of uh, 30 millisieverts in average, and also the public in contaminated countries, which are which are Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine, receive around nine millisieverts of effective dose. And also in these three countries, uh, they found more than thirty-seven kilobacter per meter square of cesium one three seven in their soil, and more than five hundred fifty-five kilobacter per meter square of cesium one three seven in soil at more contaminated areas of street control. Okay, uh, for the symptoms, uh, as the victims were not immediately evacuated, within a few hours of the excursions, many people fell ill. They reported uh, severe headache, metallic taste in their mouth, and uncontrollable coughing and vomiting. Uh, 31 died within three months uh, due to the initial steam explosions, exposure to radiations and thermal burns, and also the acute radiation sickness. Uh, also, there are pro cases that have problem with baby on pregnant women. Okay, for long, long term effect, the most significant uh, effect is the thyroid cancer because uh, in 2018, they reported that 20,000 documented cases of thyroid cancer uh, among people uh, below uh, 18 years old during the accidents. Uh, and also, there are effect of leukemia and cataract, uh, mental health and psychological effects, and also it affects uh, the environment. As you can see from the picture below, the, the forest around the reactor is named as red forest because it, uh, because it turns reddish brown after the accidents because it receives uh, radioactive, uh, it receives radioactive and also the plants will die. Okay, uh, for more info, uh, you can get more insight on Chernobyl by watching uh, movies and series. Uh, and also you can uh, watch documentaries uh, in YouTube where uh, people, uh, victims, the real victims uh, that survive until today explain uh, the real situations uh, on that, at that time. Okay, uh, uh, I will, uh, so let's see uh, a video. Uh, on Chernobyl from one of the movies. Okay. 
Wait, ah. All of the good we did, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that to them, justice was done. You see, a just world is a sane world. There was nothing sane about Chernobyl. I'm pleased to report that the situation in Chernobyl is stable. In terms of radiation, I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest X-ray. No, Chernobyl is on fire. And every atom of uranium is like a bullet, penetrating everything in its path. Metal, concrete, flesh. Now Chernobyl holds over three trillion of these bullets. Some of them will not stop firing for 50,000 years. Tell me how to put it out. You are dealing with something that has never occurred on this planet before. Cut the phone lines. Contain the spread of misinformation. What will happen to our boys? The pain is unimaginable. In three days to three weeks, you're dead. You can see him and you cannot touch him. Do you understand? What happened on the night of the accident? Asking the right question will give you the truth. There is no truth. What happened there? What happened after? All of it. All of it. Madness. Okay, hi, my name is Intan. I will continue with the accident happened in Fukushima Daiichi. So this is the chronological order on what happened during the accidents, but uh, I will not go through this. I will just show you guys the picture so that you guys can have with the understanding. So this is the summary of the events. For the Fukushima Daiichi, there are a total of six nuclear reactors, but during that time, only three of them were operating and loaded with this fuel. But for the accident, four of the nuclear reactors were affected. So what happened was, during the accident, the tsunami hit the Fukushima Daiichi and caused the flood. And when the, when the flood occurs, the power source will cut off. Uh, so, the water cannot be separated, hence causes the overheating in the nuclear reactors. When the overheating, uh, when the overheating occurs, the fuel melted, and when the fuel melted, uh, it will release radioactive material as well as the zirconium. Zirconium it will react with the water, absorbing oxygen, and will release hydrogen gas. This hydrogen will then go up to the ventilating pipe. Into the, into the top of the containment building and when it interacts with the oxygen, it will explode and cause an explosion to the three of these reactors. But for reactor number four, even though it was not uh, operating during that time, it is still it was still affected because uh, it shared the valve with the reactor number three. So the hydrogen from the reactor number three travel to the reactor number four and interact with the uh, interact with the oxygen and cause the explosion. Next. So this, uh, this were the radiation that were emitted to the surrounding and it contains cesium-137, cesium-134, xenon-133 and also iodine-131. 
next slide please. so during the accident there were actually a uh, mass evacuation of public they were ordered by the government themselves uh, the evacuation happens uh, started with the two, only two kilometer radius from the Fukushima Matachi and it increased to the three kilometer and then to, to the 10 kilometer and 20 and eventually to the 30 kilometer from the Fukushima Daiichi. So how much uh, those was uh, so how much those was received by the victim, especially the staff? Actually, 19,954 people, which were the staff, uh, measured the dose received by them. Uh, and they are the one that working on the site since 11 March. And from uh, this, the total of number, on the six I received uh, the dose over 250 mSq, which is among 309 to 678 mSq. The six were actually the staff that were working in the control unit in nuclear reactor 3 and 4 during the first two days of accident, and they didn't wear proper breathing apparatus. Even though uh, they received a really high dose, but fortunately, they didn't uh, show any radiation sickness during that time. So what is what were the causes of the accident? Causes of accident can actually be divided into two, which are natural disaster and also human negligence. For, for natural disaster, we are already aware that it is due to the tsunami, which, which caused the flood and so on. But for human negligence, we can further divide it into three. First is the height of the seawall. Second is the location of the diesel, which is the backup generator, and third is the poor maintenance. For the high seawall, 18 years before the accident, which is 18 years before the tsunami, he was predicted by uh, using scientific knowledge that there will be a large earthquake that will cause major tsunami about 15 meters in height. And this uh, info was, was sent to the TEPCO, which is the company that owned the Fukushima Daiichi, and also the government, but both authorities didn't do anything during that time. So that's why when the tsunami hit the Fukushima Daiichi, it managed to overtop the uh, facility and cause the flood. For the location of this zone, uh, every power plant station uh, will have their own backup generator so that uh, in any case, if the main uh, generator shut down, the backup can do its work. And this also uh, stem for the Fukushima Daiichi Highway. They located the diesel generator in the lower ground and also underground. That's why when the flight occurs, the generator cannot work because uh, they already sink in the flight. That is the poor maintenance. So the workers of the Fukushima Daiichi come forward and stated that actually they never do uh, maintenance, especially for the safety cooling system for the uh, Fukushima Daiichi. That's why uh, this report the accident occurs. So next slide. These are the process that were done to clean up and decontaminate it and decontaminate the site. And it includes the covering with resin and also installation of circulating pump. So uh, covering the floor with resin was actually done to make sure that the dust and small particles of radioactive material are immobilized. While for the circulating pump, it was installed to pump up the flight which were already contaminated with radioactive material and store them into the temporary tanks. Next slide. So what are the effects of the accident on human health? Up until now, um, I didn't find any uh, paper that stated any long-term of radiations to the long-term of radiation effects to the human health, but the victims did suffer from the mental health such as depression, anxiety, and also PTSD. Plus, uh, there was increase in suicide rate for the uh, residents who were living near to the Fukushima Daiichi. In the future, Japan government actually plans to release the Fukushima wastewater into the ocean. As I stated earlier, the contaminated water was stored in the tanks, and this uh, wastewater will be released into the ocean. So before they release the water, the wastewater into the ocean, this water has been treated using uh, advanced liquid processing system, which, which is ALPS, uh, and it is uh, provided by the tech pool company. By using this system, 62 kinds of radionuclides are filtered out and leaving only tritium. 
So this pretium cannot be filtered out by the system. So they plan uh, to dilute the uh, tritium by releasing it into the ocean. Uh, but uh, it is safe because tritium has low energy. Uh, tritium is low energy beta particles. And also in the future, Japan uh, are planning to dismantle the Fukushima forever. Okay, so that is all from me. Thank you. Any technical problem? Okay, uh, hi everyone. Sorry. I'm so sorry for the interruption. Okay, let's move on to another radiological incident. But this one, it is not a nuclear incident. Instead, it is a radiotherapy incident by which the incident involves radiotherapy incident and not nuclear incident. We will now travel to Bolivia, Brazil, where a massive radiation incident occurred on the late 1987. The incident started due to the uh, let's see the next slide, please. Okay. The incident actually started due to the dismantling of um, System 137 teletherapy unit from a disused radiographic clinic site by a non radiation worker. In this context, non radiation worker is actually a public. So, uh, the system activity is founded at 1375 Curie or 50.9 terabacterol. The source was cesium-137 in the form of salt, such that it is a cesium chloride and highly soluble in water, and it is powdered. So this makes it more easier to, for it to disperse and contaminate people. Uh, there are four fatalities from this incident, and uh, 249 people are contaminated with cesium-137 out of 112,000 people screened for contamination. Demolishing of seven houses, removal of soil gardens, demolishing of like 14 cars, three buses, and also contamination of five peaks. The beta and gamma irradiation are found from the cesium 137. Okay, moving on to the chronology of the incident. It uh, the teletherapy, teletherapy unit was actually from a private radiographic clinic that was closed down and relocated to a new premise. Taking with it, there are two teletherapy units, which is a cobalt 60 and CC127. They only took the cobalt 60 teletherapy unit and living in the old premise, the CC127 teletherapy unit. So the building is um, partially demolished and leaving the teletherapy unit unsecured. Hence, public came in to search for scrap. So uh, on 13th of September, Mr. Robert and his friend went to the disused clinic site and discovered the valuable equipment for scrap. He did not know anything, so he tried to dismantle the telegraphy unit on site and rotating assembly. They even took home the, the unit itself on a wheelbarrow, and on the following day, both of them felt nausea and swollen hands on the following days. On 18, the rotating assembly is placed under the main tree because they haven't finished dismantling the unit. So they tried to puncture one millimeter thick window of source capsule, and scoop out some powdered sauce. And this is the initial of the initial trigger of this unlucky incident when you scoop out the powdered sauce, not knowing the 
characteristics of the source and everything. Okay, the pieces of uh, rotating assembly sold to the jacket owner. And at that time, neighbors visited when they noticed a glowing blue light from the source. The fragments of sources are removed from capsule and distributed to other families. The wife of the jacket owner felt vomited and diarrhea and incorrectly diagnosed as allergic reaction. The estimated dose received by the uh, wife is 4.3 gray and eventually she died from the radiation. The workers of the jacket of the owner also extract the lead shield from the rotating assembly and they eventually died too from 4.5 to 5.3 gray something. Okay, on 24th of September, the brother of the Jangyat owner brought home some fragment sources and placed them on the table. And innocent, his daughter, played with it while eating. So the direct consumption of the cesium-137 let her, causes her to die from 6 gray of radiation. And um, her coffin is made of, is actually made of lead coffin to minimize the exposure radiation. On 28th of September, the wife felt something is wrong somewhere. So she tried to, she took the remnants of the rotating assembly in a bag to a health office. And thank God that the, one of the, one of the doctors recognized that the burns and the skin lesions and uh, one of the symptoms for radiation damage. So the suspicion of radiation damage became and the doctor contacted medical physicists. On 29th of September, medical physicists took measurement and the dose rate immediately deflected to a full scale irrespective of direction. So he is convinced that the major there is uh, no, there was a major contamination of radiation source. So uh, they started the isolation evacuation process uh, on the 30th, uh, oh, sorry, on the 29th of September. And to conclude, 3rd of October, there are 249 people contaminated from the 112,000 people screened for contamination. Okay, moving on to the decontamination um, efforts. They did some demolition of properties due to the high radiation, removal of contaminated soils, and placed them in industrial drums for disposal. They also strip off things from walls and floors were clean. They also um, add some 30 millimeter new topsoil and concrete to the worst contaminated area. And the contaminated person are advised to take showers just to, and their clothes are all, are all separated in a special bag. Okay, there are almost um, six facilities detected as dangerous and highly contaminated. 14 cars, three buses, and five pigs were deemed as contaminated. So every resident in the area will try each and check for contamination. And the, the, uh, the contaminated person were all sent to Olympic Stadium as a triage and center for contamination person. The disposal site was established 20 kilometers away from Guinea, and they spent on the October to plan the cleanup process. There are almost like 500 workers and staff resourced for the cleanup process. After Christmas, um, the affected areas were resurveyed and any extra decontamination efforts needed were done. In total, there are 3,500 meters square waste was generated. And that is a lot, yeah. Okay, uh, moving on to the medical effects of the uh, radiation damage. The uh, significant whole body irradiation, acute radiation syndrome, severe local radiation burns, also external and internal contamination of cesium-137. The skin lesions exhibit uh, the drying sloughing of necrotic skin and reapitalization, which confirms the occurrence of superficial injury by beta irradiation, and the contamination actually decreases through the sloughing of this necrotic skin. Localized burns were treated actually using aloe vera and analgesic um, solutions. There are also therapeutic procedures in order to combat those uh, medical effects. They treat first they treat the acute radiation syndrome by using cytogenetic 
technique from chromosomal aberration analysis. They also treat local radiation injuries such as swelling, erythema, and blistering and everything. Also, there are there are efforts to accelerate the decorporation of cesium-137 using a drug called Prussian Blue. And also, it is very important to actually provide a psychiatric support due to the shock of the radiation. Um, in the end, the owner of the IGR clinic were actually charged with criminal negligence, but they were left off. And they only, however, they only paid fines for the condition of the building that the machine houses. So uh, this is actually a, a short video of what actually happened in Goiânia, Brazil. Let's, let's watch it. Years ago, Brazilian scrap merchants stole a shiny canister and got more than they bargained for. It contained cesium chloride. Radioactive powder drifted around the Brazilian city. Nearly 200 people were contaminated. Four would later die, including a little girl. Cleaning up the city turned out to be a mammoth task. Streets, pavements, shops and bars all needed to be decontaminated. Poisoned soil had to be dug up and carted away. Some homes were beyond salvation. They were so contaminated that they have to de demolish. The cleanup took six months, and scientists worrying about the dirty bomb have noticed that it also created a completely unexpected problem. A handful of cesium had created a phenomenal 3,000 cubic meters of contaminated rubbish. The waste material produced by the cleanup was enough to cover a football field to waist height. Okay, yes, the video ended like that. Okay, um, all in all, it was believed that these incidents could be avoided actually with proper management of the owners of the machines as well as the authorities. Not only that, the principle of radiation protection radiation protection such as a justification of practices optimization of protection and also those limits are essential to be practiced responsibilities of authorized personnel are highly needed and to avoid such unlucky incident i think that's all from my group and i again i am so sorry for the technical issues that just happened earlier thank you very much for your attention All right, thank you so much, second group. So maybe I give um, like five minutes, just in case anyone wants to ask a question for second group. You can type in in the chat box or you can just ask a question, unmute and then ask a question. <clears throat> 